Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa Siegel. I'm a professor of migration studies and this is a channel about all things migration. So let's jump right in today and we are going to continue with our series on migration snapshots where we take a deep dive into a specific country in very quick snippets using the Knowledge Center on Migration and Demography's Atlas of Migration, which is a great source of information on migration in the EU. If you're interested in more on that, you can check out my video where I talk about the Atlas of migration but today we are going to focus on Belgium so let's jump right in and get started I will look at the population of emigrants and immigrants in the country the residence permits and visas issued asylum applications we'll also look at one measure of irregular migration we'll look at citizenship and naturalization and also some indicators of social inclusion as well as education and employment. So let's jump right in with some of the population statistics. If we look here, you can see that Belgium's population is around 11 and a half million people. And of those 11 and a half million people, 8% of that population is made up of European immigrants and around 4.5% or 4.6% are made up of non-European immigrants, so immigrants from outside of the EU. So together that means that Belgian, Belgium's immigrant population is around 12.4% of the population. Now that is looking at the population and migrant stocks in 2020. Now let's look at flows. If you're interested to learn more about the difference between migrant stocks and migrant flows, you can check out my video also on that. In general, what flows mean are looking at the people who are leaving a country and coming into the country in that same year. So in one specific year period, and we're gonna look at 2018 here. Now let's first look at immigration, so that's people coming into the country. And in 2018, around 58% of the immigrants that came into the country were from the European Union, while only 42% were from countries outside of the European Union. If we look at emigration, or people leaving Belgium, we can see here that around 64% of the people that left Belgium in 2018 went to another European country, where only 36% went to a country outside of the European Union. Now, if we look at residence permits issued, and again, residence permits are generally only issued to people who are um, non-European, so these are mainly for third country nationals. So if we look at the first residence permits issued between 2016 and 2019, what you can see is that by far more residence permits were issued for family reasons than for any other reason. And family reasons could be family formation or family reunification. Now we can also see that a decent part of the population also received residence permits for educational purposes and another section so between 35 percent and 22 percent between 2016 and 2019 also received residence permits for other reasons and those other reasons could thing, be things like um, seeking asylum or gaining refugee status and other things. If we look at also valid residence permits at the end of the year, so this was not necessarily the first um, residence permit issued, but what, that per what people are holding at that given time in 2019, again, you can see a large number of those are for family reasons. Now let's turn our attention to asylum. Uh, so what you can see here are the first time applications of people seeking asylum in Belgium. And like many other countries, you also see that more men than women have been trying to claim asylum in Belgium between 2016 and 2019. So in 2019, we saw um, a larger, uh, an uptick in the number of asylum applications put in, and 66% of those were put in by men. Now, in the same time period, if we look at the first instance decisions, so basically if people were allowed to stay based on um, fear of persecution or humanitarian grounds, etc., you can see that actually still a, a large portion of people were rejected. So between 2016 and 2019, between 40% and 62% of, of all applications were rejected. 
while we do see a substantial number receiving protection under the Geneva Convention. And so that means that these people received refugee status. And then we also see a smaller number re receiving some kind of subsidiary protection and being allowed to stay in the country. Now let's look at one measure of irregular migration. And to do this, we can look at the number of people who were ordered to leave the country and who no longer had the right to stay in Belgium and look at the difference between that and the people that actually did leave. So what we can see is that between 2016 and 2019, actually only a small portion of the people that were ordered to leave the country actually did. Only around 20% of people actually returned or at least left the country. And that means that the difference there are generally people who will end up in irregularity of some sort. Now let's look at naturalization. And what does naturalization mean? Naturalization is actually acquiring the citizenship of a country. So in this case, we are looking obviously at Belgium. And if we look at the difference between EU and non-EU citizens, we can see that non-EU citizens have a much higher take up rate of uh, citizenship acquisition than EU citizens. This is very similar to many other countries, um, but makes a lot of sense because in general, European citizens already have most of the same rights as a Belgian national. So there's not really a need or a reason for them to uh, obtain an additional citizenship or a new citizenship. You can also see here um, at the share of foreign citizens who have acquired citizenship between 2015 and 2018, Again, um, very low percentages in general between, you know, five and 6% of uh, um, foreign citizens who actually do acquire citizenship in a given year. Now let's move on to some indicators of social in inclusion. And let's start out with um, income or net income. And what we see here is that in general, nationals actually have higher levels of income than both EU immigrants and non-EU immigrants. Although EU immigrants do have higher levels of, of income compared to non-EU immigrants. If we look at overcrowding rates, which has to do with the number of people living in a specific household, we see that both EU and non-EU immigrants do have higher rates of overcrowding than nationals, but non-EU immigrants have the highest. If we look at indicators of poverty or the risk of poverty, both for adults and for children, we do see here that non-nationals have a higher rate of poverty than nationals and non-EU national adults have the highest rates of uh, um, risks of poverty. And we can look at education and here we can see the difference between nationals EU immigrants and non-EU immigrants with regard to low, medium, and high levels of education. As far as high levels of education are concerned, nationals and European uh, immigrants look very similar, um, but EU immigrants do have slightly more people that have lower levels of education than the nationals. If we look at non-European immigrants, we do see here that more of them, 43%, are represented in low education than in the other groups. However, we do still see that more than 50% of immigrants coming from outside of the EU do still have medium and high levels of education. Now, finally, let's turn to labor market integration outcomes, or let's look at differences in labor market outcomes. Here, we look at employment, unemployment, long-term unemployment, rates. And what we can see here is that in general, the, the native or the national population has higher rates of employment. Um, but in many cases, it's not so different from European immigrants. However, migrants from outside of the EU do have lower rates of employment than the other groups. If we look at the flip side and unemployment rates. Here again, we see European nationals and Belgian nationals looking more similar, um, but, other, but the other groups, or specifically in this case, immigrants from outside of the EU do seem to have higher rates of unemployment. 
when we look at long-term unemployment, there is some missing data here. So it might be a bit hard to tell as to what is exactly going on. We don't have so much data here also for um, the non-European immigrant group. So let's then now move to looking at this by different levels of education, which makes a lot of sense because of course that's highly correlated with your ability to be attractive on the labor market. And let's first start with those people with high levels of education. We see here again that with regard to high levels of education, um, EU immigrants look very similar to nationals, whereas non-European immigrants have much lower rates of, uh, um, of employment within this educational category. Again, this looks similar at the medium education level, but at the low education level here, we do see that European immigrants do have slightly better outcomes on the labor market than both nationals and immigrants coming from outside of the EU. Now, this was just a very quick snapshot looking at the Belgian case. If you're interested in videos on other countries, please do check out my, the link here and I will put it in the description uh, so that you can check out other videos on other countries. If you like this video, please do like it. Think about subscribing to the channel and definitely hit that notification bell so that you don't miss any of my videos that I upload every week. And I do hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.